B20 summit in the capital. Joining me now is the chairman of State Bank of India, Dinesh Khara, also the chair of the Task Force on Financial Inclusion. Mr. Khara, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Before I talk to you about the B20, well, a story that my colleague Sapna Das broke last evening that Mr. Khara is likely to be given uh, an extension for another 10 months. I know you won't comment on that, but uh, any indication at all, sir? Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right. But let's talk about the B20, Mr. Khara. Uh, you know, specific recommendations have been put across by various task force. 54 recommendations with 172 policy actions, specifically on financial inclusion. Since uh, uh, India has made it clear that to the G20, you will propose inclusion as the number one priority. What are the specifics? Well, when, when it comes to the specific, you know, what we have shared within the B20 is essentially what we have learned over all these years, ever since we got into the Jandhan and then we actually improved upon the product profile. We went uh, for DBT also, we started using them. And today we have got a situation where we could see that uh, almost about 10 trillion worth of uh, financial savings could be channelized through these accounts. So I think it's, it, is, it, it is something which gives a leap of faith for those countries who are not having the financial inclusion. And on the top of it, it's a democratization of the finance. Mm. That is something which I believe is going to be le the learning which we have from uh, our financial inclusion initiative and which we have shared with uh, the rest of the globe. And, uh, and incidentally, when we used to deliberate on this subject, almost about 100 odd countries and we used to have the participation and we used to have a situation where people used to narrate their experiences. So I think it was quite an interesting exercise and it was not easy to collate all that into few recommendations. But nevertheless, I would say that uh, the way the recommendations have been made, yeah. it is first and foremost in terms of the ecosystem, hmm. second is in terms of product and third in terms of the regulatory regime which right. should be there. So these are three broad categories where we could summarize all our recommendations. Hmm. And also on the top of it, what we have advocated is that there could be a financial inclusion institute. Okay. So which means that whatever learnings are happening from each of the country, hmm. it can actually be consolidated at the institute level hmm. and thereafter the practices can be improved upon. So this is the same B20 Global Institute that uh, Chandra spoke of? Yeah. Okay. And uh, now you said that, you know, you've tried to crystallize the learnings that India has uh, seen uh, over the course of the years with its own digital journey, with its own inclusion journey. Where do you believe we now need to prioritize? One wave is done as far as opening bank accounts and so on and so forth is concerned. What do we now need to prioritize? I think now it is credit linkage which is required to be done because uh, though a lot of initiatives have been taken, even initiatives like PM Swanithi, like you know when it comes to we are trying to fund each of the street vendor mm. from the formal banking system. So I think it is a great initiative by itself. Only thing is now everybody has to adopt the credit culture. Mm. Once they will adopt the credit culture, which I have got a conviction that yes it will be. Because what we have seen over the years is that when it comes to the retail credit, mm. there was a point of time when nobody used to lend to the individual even for building yeah. houses. Yeah. We have seen that today when it comes to mortgage loan, everybody falls on each other when it comes mm. to commercial banks mm. to lend for the mm. for the housing loan. So this is a journey which we have seen and it is all attributed to the ecosystem which has got built over the period of time. Mm. I think now it's a time when it's early days when this kind of a initiative is now being taken to finance the last leg, maybe the beneficiary who is mm. at the last leg which mm. is quite at a distance. As of now, they are having the benefit of availing finance through NBFCs, through MFIs. Maybe now with the digital also coming in, there will be a point of time when all this becomes seamless and even mm. lending for a small borrower for the banking system will make a lot of value. Mm. So I think that is the kind of a thing which means that people will be inclusive from the credit point of view, also democratization of, of, of the credit is the next step which I believe. Democratization of credit and linked to that is digitalization as well that you spoke of. I want to get your reaction to something that Mr. K.D. Kamat said to me uh, two days ago. He said that he believes there is only a window of three to five years for legacy incumbents to be able to disrupt themselves 
to ensure that they're not disrupted by the fintech world. Uh, you know, that's a fairly serious comment there. How do you react and respond to that? We have been always looking at it from that perspective only for, with that lens. And that is the reason way back in 2017 we introduced Yono. And now we are upgrading that Yono. And I think practically all the legacy players are also embracing the technology and are ensuring that they should be in a position to offer the services through the digital mode. Mm. So how is that changing the way that you're hiring, the kind of investments that you're making, etc. as you move towards uh, becoming a more and more digital bank? Well, of course, you know, for a bank like us, if at all somebody will ask me whether the bank will be only digital, my answer is no. no. We have to be digital. Because the kind of variety whom we serve, we have to have the physical footprints mm. as well as the digital footprints. But yes, of course, when it comes to the upgrading of skills, we have done it all through. We have actually upgraded our skill of the, of the manpower from the physical banking to the digital banking. So they are all accustomed to this. And when the ecosystem changes, the I mean, those are the natural ingredients which yeah. actually uh, encourages them, uh, them to go for the digital learning also. Right. Speaking of ingredients, uh, I want to understand what you made of the MPC minutes. Do you read the MPC minutes as being more hawkish uh, or do you see it differently? Do you think the RBI and the MPC are willing to look through the current food inflation that we are seeing? No, I think they are, they are very clearly they are looking through the current inflation. But I would also mention that uh, maybe a monthly inflation number could not be seen as a trend. Maybe we'll have to wait and watch how the trend is going to evolve. So maybe that would be the, that's how I, I read the MPC minutes. In terms of uh, uh, appetite, my final question to you, sir. Given the fact that, uh, you know, banks have had their best quarter in the last several years uh, and balance sheets are healthy and strong, uh, you know, what is the risk appetite today? And are there any concerns at all in terms of the unsecured loans? As regards unsecured loans is, are, are concerned, you know, if at all, the banks have got the machinery which is ensuring the right kind of a sourcing and also the proper underwriting and also very effective control and follow. Then perhaps unsecured actually needs all this and that too it should be on the top of it. So there is no room for any kind, any kind of a laxity on, on these counts. If at all these are there, unsecured is not as much of a challenge. Now when you said that uh, uh, I mean, what is the risk appetite? I think for uh, all the economic activities which are happening in the economy, we are more than happy to look at it, provided it meets our risk matrix. Mm. So I think that is how we look at the opportunities. Well, opportunities uh, galore at this point in time. And as, uh, as uh, Mr. Kara said, fingers crossed on the official announcement as far as the extension is concerned. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very, very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18, the chair of the B20 Task Force on Financial Inclusion and the chairman of State Bank of India in conversation with us. We're taking a break. We're back with more. Don't go anywhere in a minute. Thank you very much.